So this Sunday, January 29th, 2017, we get the Royal Rumble. And it's the moment in time where a lot of us hope that we start to rediscover a little bit of interest in professional wrestling, or I guess you would say more specifically the WWE. We hope that we get an effective kickoff to the road to WrestleMania. It's the official mark of the WrestleMania season. We want to continue justification as to why we continue to watch the product in any way, shape, or form. And we want something to give us something to get us excited for something come WrestleMania. And that's the whole truth of the matter. And as I look at this road to the Royal Rumble, and I look at the Royal Rumble show itself, and I start to project ahead potentially to WrestleMania, honestly, I don't know what the hell to think. And frankly, I don't even know if this company at this moment knows what the hell they're doing. Furthermore, we're starting to get in a place where this is really, really starting to look like one giant clusterfuck, and that's just all there is to it. I mean, there's no way for me to really sugarcoat that. Some clearly will. The defenders will sit there, I'm sure, and say something to the effect of, well, we don't really know what's going to happen at the Royal Rumble. That keeps it fresh. That keeps it exciting. There's all types of possibilities of potential there. In theory, yes, that could be a valid argument, but they'll sound more like alternative facts to me. The simple fact of the matter is, it does not really matter what this company is going to do because creating interesting, compelling television and shows just is not in their wheelhouse anymore. It's just not their forte. It's not something they've proven capable of doing. Making new stars, bitch, please. Bitch, please. But again, coming into this 2017 Royal Rumble, I was really looking for this show to be that moment in time that gives me that temporarily boost of an adrenaline, if you will, that you know ramps up the excitement level a little bit, kind of fills the gap for me uh, now that there's not NFL every weekend um, and many other things. I was hoping that this would be the show, and I just don't see where it's going to be. Now, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll come on here Sunday night, Monday morning or afternoon, and I'll talk about how much I pleasantly was surprised at how good the show was and how much I enjoyed the show. But from where I'm sitting right now, that ain't happening. Like, for example, we've got a two-hour kickoff show before the Rumble even begins. Now, frankly, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter a whole hell of a lot uh, because I sure won't watch it, and I'm sure a lot of other people won't watch it. It's just, frankly, another thing for us to bitch about. But it is an important thing to bitch about because it speaks to this company even more diluting their own product and oversaturating their own product. We don't need a two-hour kickoff show for one of the big four pay-per-views, especially if it's not the granddaddy of them all pay-per-views in WrestleMania. On top of that, in that two hours, you have three matches on the kickoff show. Well, why? We need to fill the main Royal Rumble card. We don't need to be worrying about filling space on the kickoff show. Where are the priorities here? Three matches on the kickoff show. Out of the eight total planned matches you have for the Royal Rumble event, as of this recording, 37.5% of them are there to fill content for the pre-show. This is ridiculous. And that's not even getting to the main show which is going to start at 7 Eastern, which means potentially it's going to have close to four hours of runtime. And in that almost four hours of runtime, as of right now, we have five matches. Five! To fill four mother-flipping hours. Five matches. Now you might say the Royal Rumble will fill about an hour, maybe slightly more. Probably. But there's still almost three hours of content to fill and only four matches to fill it. With matches that do not necessitate the length of time that would be required to effectively fill that much fill time on a freaking show. I get the concept of wanting to make your big four seem like the big four and trying to make those shows feel special. But to be honest with you, you'd be more likely to make it feel like a different show and a more important show at this point, especially compared to a Raw, if you made it two hours as opposed to making it four. Because all you do is wear out your audience. All you do is tire out your freaking audience and give yourself way too much time to fill 
with way too little to fill it with. And it's that simple. I mean, Christ, if you remember, WrestleMania was, what, pushing five hours for the main show alone last year. That's ridiculous. Who wants to sit there and watch that much professional wrestling? Or, more so, who wants to watch that much WWE? That's madness. Absolute madness. Five matches to fill four almost hours of fucking content on the network. That's unnecessary. And even when you look at the matches, like I said, the Royal Rumble, okay, that takes an hour, maybe an hour and ten minutes with the setup and the wrap-up and everything else. Again, that's almost three hours to fill with four matches. That means that those other four matches and then other filler crap that you put in there would have to average 45 minutes to effectively fill. And even if you put one more match on this card, it still doesn't solve the problem that these matches that are going to be on there for the most part are going to be way too goddamn long. Just because you have time doesn't mean you always need to use it. Just because a match can go longer doesn't mean it always should. And if all the matches are similar in length and similar in feel, then none of them really work and nothing really gets over and nothing truly stands out. And that's a problem. Each match on a wrestling card, especially a big show like this, should have some type of different feeling to it. Should have a different type of result to it. Should have different types of characters, a different type of story. The match itself should be worked in a different type of way. And that's just not the reality of today's WWE. It is the epitome of corporate crap. Where everything is watered down, it's oversaturated, everything is the same. And that's the so simple. Like, you look at the Cruiserweight title match. It's one of the five matches that is actually on the main show itself. It's not going to feel like a Cruiserweight match. It's going to feel like a technical style of wrestling match, similar to what you might see on the main event to a degree, or on the, on the main card in terms of the world title matches. The Cruiserweights don't get to work a Cruiserweight type of style, because the guys in the main event scene work a cruiserweight style. That's stupid. It's fucked up. It's reversed. It's backed up. It's bad enough that the people that are breaking into the business now or have been in the business for a number of years were the ones that were in ROH in the Indies six, seven, eight years ago were the same ones talking about work rates and crap after listening to too many Ric Flair work or frickin' shoot videos 10, 15 years ago. Now this crap is infiltrated to the highest levels of WWE. We're too focused on the next high spot to bother to learn how to talk on the microphone, to bother to learn how to freaking become a personality. So you do all these spectacular moves and these guys do some amazing, incredible shit. And at the end of the day, it doesn't freaking matter. It doesn't get them over more because everybody does it. Nobody stands out and everybody makes less money. That's the nerdgasm that is today's wrestling scene in general and WWE specifically. But again, cruiserweight title match, if Neville doesn't win, we should fucking riot. It's dumb enough that they made him a heel when he should have been the face of the division. When I said face of the division, that also meant the baby face of the division because the WWE always does better when they build a segment or a division around a baby face champ as opposed to a heel champ. It's what they know best. It's what they do best. It's what they feel comfortable with. Neville should have been that baby face, that top guy of the cruiserweight division. Because it was somebody that people would actually like. So, of course, WWE brings it back, then tries to make him the face of the place in the Cruiserweight division by making him heel, because they're idiots. Uh, Neville's doing the best he can to work with it, but ultimately, is it really going to work? People don't want to boo the guy, so why would they boo the guy? It's just dumb. Vince says there aren't baby faces or heels, but then on the one hand, he does crap like this, where he clearly does a character turn to turn the guy dark, but it doesn't work that way, and people don't boo him, they cheer him. But the heroes you force down our throats for so many years, the fans still boo. It's just, just a bunch of bullshit. But how long is this freaking Cruiserweight title match going to be? How long does it actually need to be? You know, the Cruiserweight match should be something that's 10 to 12 minutes, even if it's for the title, because there's not enough story here to necessitate going 25 or 30. And it probably will only go 10 or 12. But it should be 10 to 12 minutes of crash test dummy bullshit that helps it stand out in its own way and is what the cruiserweight should be. A lot of choreographed crap. Instead, it's going to be a lot of choreographed crap that is slow and methodical and plotted. And then you're going to burn through this match and you're going to have a ton of time to fill. 
Now, surely somewhere in there, we're going to get something involving Triple H and Seth Rollins, I would venture a guess. And even using the rule of God, and this is in the books of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley, excuse me, that's still going to fill, what, 20 minutes? Maybe 25 if you get the full entrance, including water spitting and taint sweat? Still way too much time to fill. The Raw women's title match between Bailey and Charlotte. Whoopee. If, if it's frankly one of these lose lose situations because if Charlotte wins, this is kind of stupid, especially if you get Stephanie McMahon involved. That's just dumb, but that might be where they're going. Or if Bailey wins, it's kind of dumb because you built this whole thing around the fact that Charlotte doesn't lose at pay per views and then she loses at the pay per view that isn't the biggest pay per view of the year. So you get a limited return on the payoff. And if they end up having Charlotte retain. And then they go on to WrestleMania, and you get some four-way for the women's title. That's freaking dumb, too. Just stupid. Now, granted, Charlotte probably did some of the best promo work or interview work she had done in quite some time this past Monday on Raw. And Bailey was about as bad as Bailey is. Um, this is not enough to get me to care about this match. And again, how long does this match need to be? Is it probably going to be a lot longer than it should be, or it's going to be the length that it should be, but there's going to be so much filler and other crap or filling time with commercials and pointless segments and shit that it's still going to hurt the show. And where it really starts to get strange to me is with the two world title matches. You got the WWE Universal title. And we got Chris Jericho going in a shark cage. Now just because these two guys, Owens and Jericho have wrestled Roman Reigns seemingly forever and ever, doesn't mean that this story has gotten to the point that it necessitates an old Crockett Territory shark cage. There's no Jim Cornette involved here. There's no J.J. Dillon involved here. The story does not necessitate it. So, of course, we do it. We make the match no DQ because it's fucking dumb. And again... How many times have you seen Kevin Owens wrestle Roman Reigns? Why in the fuck would anybody give a shit about this match? It doesn't even matter if you liked both of the guys. Like, even for all you nerds that get off the Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, at some point in time, there's a diminishing return on the entertainment value of these guys always wrestling each other. And if they've wrestled them each other umpteen dozen times for free on TV, why in the hell would I want to see it as part of a special event? Because there is absolutely nothing special about it other than the reaction when Roman Reigns win this title. And that's when it's going to get special, at least on Twitter. <laughs> the whining, the crying, the bitching and moaning are going to kick off to the nth degree. But let's face it, even if you kept the title on Kevin Owens, what well, you're going to have your U.S. champ versus your Universal champ at WrestleMania, Jericho versus Owens, that's where the story is going, those two facing off at of WrestleMania. But frankly, that feud feels more worthy of the U.S. title or doesn't need a title. You most certainly shouldn't saddle the world title with it. Unfortunately, you have no choice in this case because of the way you've booked yourself into a corner. You have to put that belt on fucking Roman and hope it's not a total schmoz and fuck up, but it probably will be. Not interested in this match at all. Don't even know why I will watch it. And I may ultimately choose not to watch it. I may only watch it because of the buildup and the anticipation to the inevitable Reigns win, which will sit there and get me all giggly tits in terms of the possibilities for the next Roman Reigns uh, reign atop the WWE. I mean, unless this is where you get Rollins and Triple H involved, and God knows, and all bets are off, but... Got lame written all over it. Now, the WWE Championship match with Styles defending against Cena. These guys have wrestled several times, but there is still story there. The performers are, frankly, much better there, especially when it comes to AJ Styles. Um, this has the feeling of inevitability. This has the feeling of Cena's winning the 16th title here that we're going on to WrestleMania with John Cena and Roman Reigns as the two world champions. <laughs> Wrestling's past and wrestling's future. <laughs> they're both holding down the floor to top the WWE, and they're bringing the company's product right along with them. Oh, my God. Surely, Styles Cena will be a better match than Reigns and Owens. Because at least with Styles and Cena, it's been a couple of months that you've seen it. It hasn't been, you know, two weeks, three weeks since you last saw it. Uh, but we're, we're in a real place. I mean, 
Styles has done a lot of SmackDown champion. To sit there and have him lose the title here seems kind of cheap, especially if you're preparing him to feud against Shane McMahon. Not saying that elements of that feud wouldn't work, but it is a step down. It's not a bad spot to be in. It's still a featured spot. I mean, ultimately, you'd be feuding with the boss's son. So that will get main event type of treatment, even though it's not the main event of WrestleMania. Although at this point, who the hell knows what actually is the main event of WrestleMania or what should main event WrestleMania be. Cena wins, LOL. If Styles actually ends up retaining, then I don't know where the fuck they're going with Cena. I don't know where the hell they're going with AJ Styles. It's just that simple. This company seems confused. This this product literally reeks of Vince had something in mind, told everybody about it, and then for no real reason at all, as old people are prone to do, changed his fucking mind about it. And you're not going to talk me out of it, damn it! That's exactly what this reminds me of. So then we get on to the Royal Rumble match. And, you know, a lot of times in years past, you could sit there and say the result of one or both of the world title matches could kind of give tip the hat cap or an indication of who might potentially win the Rumble. Uh, and, that, and that may be the case. Like if a Roman Reigns wins the title, you might think it's this guy or this guy from Raw who potentially will win the Rumble. If Cena wins the title, you might think it's this guy or that guy or that guy that ends up potentially winning the Rumble. There's a lot of different directions this Rumble can go. And like I said, for some of the defenders, the sheep, they might sit there and argue that this is a good thing, um, that it creates an element of surprise, that it gives you intrigue. You don't really know where they're going. Now, I, I'd like to have that feeling of spontaneity, too, but I still like to have that fundamental feeling that this company knows what the fuck they're doing. And I can potentially envision and see the path that they're going down and agree with the path that they're going down. I at least like to see, if nothing else, some certainty of the WWE that this is the direction they've been wanting to go for a while, and they're going full steam ahead. And I just don't see that. I mean, because who, who could end up winning this Royal Rumble? Honestly. I've really come up with about five names. Lesnar and Goldberg is a no. Um, those two are going to be wrestling each other again, so one's going to eliminate the other, or both are going to eliminate each other now. Will that be at WrestleMania that they fight each other? Will that be at the next uh, Raw pay-per-view in February? We'll find out. Um, but they're not winning this Rumble. I, I can't imagine that they would. And, and nor should they. Um, so you got five guys. Five guys that I think of. First is The Undertaker. The Undertaker sets up the most possibilities in my mind. Because if Roman Reigns wins the Raw title... He could, in theory, go after Roman Reigns. And at least in that particular case, you know Roman Reigns is not a slouch in the ring, no matter what anybody wants to say. He works a WWE style for a big man, but he is pretty athletic. So he could do some things to make the other guy look good. At the same token, you know you're going into a situation where The Undertaker is clearly the babyface. Like, even if WWE tries to fight it, Roman Reigns is clearly the villain. He's the bad guy in this scenario. So you get the maximum return out of The Undertaker facing somebody because there's no way the crowd's going to back Roman Reigns. So there is potential appeal there, especially talking about the standard bearer versus one of the guys of the future. If Cena wins the WWE Championship, then Taker wins the Rumble. You've got the ability to go with Taker versus Cena at WrestleMania, which should be the main event of this show, which should be the match that they're building towards, which should be the featured attraction. I don't know why it seems like they're shying away from this. I don't know why it seems like they're going away from this. Um, but that's the direction to really go. Now, still my money pick at the moment is The Undertaker. Because otherwise, if he doesn't win the Rumble, I don't know who they're going to have him wrestle at WrestleMania. I mean, are you really building him up? Are you really building up Braun Strowman to have him face The Undertaker? Is that really the best match you can have for The Undertaker at WrestleMania is Braun Strowman? I mean, just think about that. Some of the idiots will sit there and suggest Finn Balor. Go fuck yourself. If Finn Balor's back, then he should be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and you start building him up the right way. Hot-shotting him to a match against a fucking Undertaker? Give me a goddamn break. Period. But who else? Braun Strowman. It's possible. I don't know that it's likely, but it's possible. I mean, they've been pushing him as a pretty big, sizable monster. And 
if they want somebody different to face off, let's say with a Roman Reigns for the title, you know, you could just picture Vince McMahon getting uh, jollies to the thought of Braun versus Roman for the title. You know, Broman versus Roman. It's got its own tagline. Ugh. It would be a raw guy. Ugh. Either A, Braun wins the title and you don't want the title on him at this point, or B, he doesn't win the title and you wasted the Royal Rumble. So, I mean, I guess it could, but I don't really see it. I've heard some talk about Randy Orton. Just for comedic purposes only, please let it be Randy Orton. So that way we can get Randy Orton versus Giant Cena finally at WrestleMania for a title. All the times these fuckheads wrestled over the years, they never wrestled one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. That's how stupid this company was. These were supposed to be your two guys of the new era. And they never squared off one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. Hogan and Savage fought at WrestleMania. Hogan and Andre fought at WrestleMania. Hogan and Warrior fought at WrestleMania. Brett and Sean fought at WrestleMania. Sean and Brett. I mean, Sean and Austin. Brett and Austin. Austin and The Rock three fucking times. God and Taker three fucking times. But not once have John Cena and Randy Orton actually wrestled each other one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania, title or not. There would be pure comedic value for me to give me two months to build up to a Breakfast Club World title match featuring Orton and Cena. Now, surely some people might be pointing to Bray Wyatt. This company can't figure out Bray Wyatt to save its fucking life. I don't know that Randy Orton's going to win the Rumble. I really don't believe that. They're probably building to a match between him and Bray at WrestleMania or between Orton Harper and Wyatt at WrestleMania, and nobody will care. Um, two other names that I, I would rank higher in terms of the possibilities of winning the Rumble at this point in time is The Miz. And for all the different names that keep getting thrown out there, I'm surprised The Miz doesn't get more traction. He just recently lost his mid-card title. He's been featured very strongly and very prominently on WWE television on SmackDown in recent months. They just had him kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with AJ Styles. There's, there's a big part of me that looks at it and says, just because people think that a Raw guy has to win the Rumble doesn't mean that he will. It could potentially set up a SmackDown guy. Because again, if you've got Styles versus Shane McMahon, that's probably not for the title. Meaning Cena wins, LOL. you got to have somebody for him to face. And sure, you might have some type of Elimination Chamber match or something, Whatever the case might be, but that's more so, I believe, where the title is going to be defended. You know, maybe that would be, yeah, if they're going to defend the title there, I highly doubt they'd have a number one contenders match there. Well, it's not out of the realm of the possibilities that we get a WrestleMania 27 rematch that Miz actually ends up winning the Royal Rumble and goes on to WrestleMania to face John Cena. And frankly, based off of the way the character has been positioned, the Miz would be one of the most reasonable and logical options this year. I mean, if you really think about it, the way he's been featured, the work that he's done, I could argue that he deserves that spot as much as anybody. He's earned that spot as much as anybody. Merits that spot from a television standpoint as much as anybody. And you have the whole hook heading into WrestleMania of Cena is trying to defend his title. And last time these two faced, The Miz beat John Cena at WrestleMania. It's a chance for Cena to potentially get revenge. It's a chance for Miz to establish his clear one up as he's the true guy of Hollywood, not this pretender John Cena. There are storytelling options there. And unless you're truly going to go all in and you can get Daniel Bryan clear to perform at WrestleMania, and then to me I'd say Miz versus Daniel Bryan all fucking day because that's a natural in interest building match that's a natural mid card grudge match don't need any titles type of match that helps make wrestlemania great but if you don't have that then what do you do with the miz you're going to waste him in a fucking wrestlemania curtain jerker in a ladder match for the ic title that seems like a poor usage of the miz and what he can bring to the table so i can make a very strong case for the miz winning the royal rumble and going on to wrestlemania and facing john cena for the title or if you wanted to turn AJ Styles babyface and you said, fuck that shit, we're changing directions with AJ Styles again, which all, for all we know could still happen. AJ Styles beats Cena again, miraculously. 
Then The Miz could potentially face Styles at WrestleMania. Now Styles can potentially flip babyface, which is where he should be long-term anyways. Miz is the natural heel there. There's all types of stories to be told, and you can still do good business with that feud. That's what's great about The Miz, to me, is that you have versatility, flexibility, possibilities, no matter who you square him up against. It could work. And the one other guy that I think could work and if they really want to rocket ship somebody and they really want to launch somebody and they really want to catch everybody by surprise, then the clear cut choice to me to win the Rumble is not your fuck stick Finn Balor. It's Samoa Joe. This is a Samoa Joe who's been, you know, around the world wrestling for years. Fans know him. I'd argue they know him more than they know Finn Balor. Sorry, New Japan fuck faces. Take your Bullet Club shit and stuff it, shove it straight up your Omegas. More people know who Samoa Joe is than Kenny Omega, and that's a fact. Period. But if you want to launch a new character, and you want to make people take him seriously and take notice right away, and you want to do something with the Royal Rumble, what better way to do that than to have a debuting guy win the Royal Rumble with name credibility behind him, with his own fan base, with years of performance track record behind him to a certain degree? You want to give somebody to Cena to face that's fresh and different. You want to build somebody up into being a monster from day one? Have him debut at the Royal Rumble and win the Royal Rumble. That's what you can do to Samoa Joe. I mean, you think about it. He could sit there and feud with AJ Styles for all the fuck you care. Maybe the fans love Samoa Joe so much that he comes in as the monster baby face to face off AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Or maybe you know, try to package him as a heel, and the crowd's really not going to buy it anyway, so it doesn't fucking matter. So you can still have him take on John Cena at WrestleMania. And imagine the babyface word Samoa Joe could do at WrestleMania trying to take the belt from John Cena. Imagine a Samoa Joe coming into the company, and his first match at the main roster level is winning the Royal Rumble, and his first one-on-one -on -one pay per view match is beating John Cena for the title at WrestleMania. To me, when I look at potential opponents for Cena and opponents that really, really would work, The Undertaker obviously works. And I think for a lot of reasons, Roman Reigns works. But I also look at guys like The Miz, and I think that works tremendously well. But perhaps, other than The Undertaker, the one that works the best is Samoa Joe. I mean, when you envision matches for Cena, and that's how you should be building your show. Your biggest guys, you should be thinking about... What matches do we want for them? Like they've done with Brock Lesnar. They've given him Goldberg, potentially for WrestleMania. You know, what match do you have for The Undertaker? God's got his spot now with Seth Rollins. What are you going to do with John Cena? That's how you build the show. You figure out how to get the most out of your biggest stars, and then you fill in the pieces and the gaps as you go. To me, if you sat there and had Taker win the Rumble and you send him at Roman Reigns, that could work. That could potentially work very, very well. Better than some people give it credit for. The buildup might be a bit dicey, but I think the match could work well. And I think once you got to WrestleMania, it would feel like something big. But Taker winning the Rumble and going on to challenge John Cena, you know, you could have Cena talk about how he runs SmackDown and Taker is SmackDown as much as anybody. I think the dynamics work there so much better. I'm not main eventing Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. I am main eventing The Undertaker versus John Cena at WrestleMania. And at this point in time, for a WrestleMania that seems to clearly lack a proven type of main event, I'd still rather gravitate towards The Undertaker versus John Cena, and that would be the approach that I would implore the WWE to take. Because if we want to come back, you could sit there and fucking still send Samoa Joe, maybe have him go to the final two, have an Undertaker eliminate him, and then Samoa Joe being the Royal Rumble runner-up, he's made a big splash, he's made an impact, you send him at fucking Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal title. You have him on Raw, Styles on SmackDown. There's a lot of different things you could do here. Shit, for all we fucking know, this company could have Shane McMahon enter the goddamn Royal Rumble, win it, and then he'll face Styles at WrestleMania. Don't rule anything out. There's a lot of options. It doesn't mean they're all good options, but I still think there's a way for the WWE to save itself and, you know, not come out of this a complete loser. Um, having somebody like Braun Strowman, that's pretty loserish. My money is still on The Undertaker winning, but I would not be very surprised at all if The Miz or Samoa Joe ended up being the guys 
that were uh, the last survivors, so to speak. Um, and even if they did that, there's still a lot of options for the WWE. But Undertaker, 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 damn it! That's the only way to go.